sisters, congregation. This life, my life, his life crucified so I can be free. He suffered for me so I may not suffer. He showed me towards me so I could love. He showed me mercy so I could be merciful. Jesus came down to earth not just to teach us but to be the teacher, to be the healer, to be the king. Adopted into his family so I may experience him throughout all the days of my life. To be able to sit on the right hand side of my father when my mortal life has ended or eternity has begun. To be able to know that my father is pleased with me. So you ask me why I have to get baptized. Well, why would I? A man that gave his life in the process of my life. <laughs> times of despair, times of discouragement. I will. When friends might turn their back on you and family might forsake you, will you still continue to go with the Lord? I will. Amen. On the profession of your faith and the power invested in me, I now baptize your name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
you leave the covering and then find the truth for yourself and you always end up falling and falling. Because that's not the plan that God has for your life. When God has a plan for your life and you get in your own way as I have done for many, many years, I always end up running back to church. And so I always comforts me and allows me to be in there. When I get back on my feet, and somebody would say something I don't want to hear or I don't like, I'm running and I'm going, you know. But then about, I would say about six years ago now, I woke up one morning and I was like, God, I'm just sick and tired of this. I can't keep running forever because eternity is a long time to be keep running. And then all of a sudden my life just starts falling apart. I lose my house. I got me inheritance with my son. I found I was pregnant with my little girl. <laughs> and I didn't have and my job, I got made redundant. I didn't have to work anymore. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I was going to think of my baby that was coming. My baby that I had, it was only five. It was just a real hard thing for me, and it's not understood, and I don't know what's what going on, but I just can't keep doing this. And then I got a phone call one day from somebody that always seemed to always hurt me, and he was like, come to England, I said, for what? Because I don't want to come over here, no sunshine over there. My summer baby, I love the beach, I have to go, I have to be in Bermuda every summer, so I can enjoy this summer, the heat, I love swimming and all the niceness. I said, girl, stop the foolishness, take the children, set all this stuff in and I come to me, I come to England. And I'm like, I have no money. I cannot come to England. I saw everything I had. I saw my dog, I saw my pants, I saw everything. And it just seemed like it wasn't enough because I still didn't have enough for the tickets to come. And then my sister's godmother said to me, she said, she would pay the difference for my ticket as the bring her that night and she'll pay the difference. And I rang her and I rang her and I rang her and I rang her and she never had to be So I said, well, I guess I'm not going. The next morning, I woke up. My phone rang. Shanti, I'm so sorry. I fell asleep. My medication makes me fall asleep. Come to my house right now and I'll pay the difference for the ticket. And that was why. Take it out of my Egypt. I came to England. I was living with this person that helped me to get here. And they ended up putting me out to me and my son as well as again in England. I had nowhere to go. I didn't know what to do. And that ended up being a blessing in this time because I ended up getting put in a house. I ended up get the sorted and everything and then I say, you know what Lord, they're doing this for me and I need to find a church. <coughs> so I start looking, I start seeking, I start seeking, couldn't find none. I went to one, I sat in the middle because I never like sitting in the back because I have to get everything that God is giving up that day. I sat in the middle and I went there for about six months and nobody never knew where I was there when I was in there and that was a real it made me feel real down. So one day I went to visit my cousins up in Warrington and they had just started their own church up there over medium congregation and the bed and I felt so cool. It was so good and I sat in the back. Like I said I usually never sit in the back. And a lady that was preaching at me called out to me and she spoke something about my life and she told me about my life and that's when the Holy Spirit was still upon my back and I moved and I, and I went back to because I'm going to catch the train every Sunday from Manchester to Warrington to go to church because at least they care and when I got back to Manchester I would keep everything on my house nothing left my son didn't want to go back in the house and I was like well, what's going on so they said, come, bring your children and come. I said, okay. I was 
sleep in somebody's house, in a, in a kid's bedroom, they give me my children in the bedroom, so I was just a little baby then. And I was there and I learned so much more about God that I did not know. I learned so much more about God that I did not know. I learned about things that was hidden from me from a little, 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 little girl. To a big woman, like I said, you know, God, I, I want you to continue to reveal the truth, the real truth, and nothing but the truth to me for the rest of my life. And then I got hurt last year. The whole church fell apart. Personal people's personal relationships got involved. And me, because I was going to church with God and not the people, I ended up getting slandered and hurt again. And I said, I said, there's no turning back for me. I said, Lord, I'm not going back, so I don't know what to do. So I don't have the church no more. My friend, Ebony, you know where she is, so she's been here for a while. And she said to me, Oh, well, come to that again. And I said, Me? I said, I'm a comedian to me. I don't want to be a <laughs> Things yes, he can. And there's some things that could be buried before she even walks out. So as yeah. we begin to stand, 
Begin to pray that God will deliver yes, and yeah. bring a change. Yeah. Bring a change. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Worship God in the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Sister Bishop, you have to leave. Thy vows, O Lord, are upon me until death. Thy vows, O Lord, are upon me until death. Thy vows, O Lord, are upon me until death. Thy vows, O Lord, are upon me until death. By the pressure of your faith and the power invested in me, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I got my mind. I feel like the rabbit in the headlights.
Like God kept pulling me away from people, but I kept taking off myself and put myself back into things where I should be. And um, I watched this video and it was saying like, and I felt like it was a message to me. It was saying sometimes for a blessing you need to come away from people. You can't get your blessings around some people. Sometimes you have to just take yourself away from the situations and stuff. And like when I look back at certain people that I used to associate with quite regular there, like one of my friends was saying to me, you, what, did you go to prison? And I said, no, I've never been to prison. She's, she went to prison and she was pregnant in prison. And a lot of my friends have been to prison and done certain things, you know. And I just feel like God has, God has proper guided me away from everything. And I feel like I'm on the back, you know, like the path that I need to be. And I want to just get shed everything from my past, all the shame and the stupid things that I've done and, you know, just become a new person like in Christ. I just want to wash away all them old sins and all that old shame. And all that. I do feel like the shame and I acted stupid when I was younger and I'm just um, blessed to be able to be baptised today on Good Friday. And I'm just happy to just wash away all them old memories and just live new and be a new person right now. And I'm proper determined to stick on this path now. And we're going to continue to pray for Sister Shelby. I'm going to ask you some questions, and as I do, I'm going to ask you to repeat three times my will. When friends and family forsake you, will you still continue to serve the Lord? I will. I will. When sometimes you're praying and you ask God for an answer and it doesn't happen immediately, will you still continue to serve the Lord? I will. In times of discouragement and when you're faced with despair and might feel isolated, will you still continue to serve the Lord? I will. Amen. Under the profession of your faith and the power invested in me, I now baptize you in the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bon, bon, bon. Smile sweetly and say it's so good for you to be here. Smile at someone and speak and say it's so good for you to be here. Come on, sweetly, my little queen, let them feel the love in your smile. Have you done it yet? I'm not going to insist. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. Smile and say, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to be very grateful. I'm going to be on a few minutes. I'm going to just go right to the point. It's beautiful. We have musicians. You can stay right there because you might need to come with me. Amen. I want us to look today for the brief time that we have in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to read. One verse. Sorry, I'll read two verses for you. Verses 13 and 14. Exodus 12, verses 13 and 14. Okay. And this is God speaking to Moses, telling him about the exodus of Egypt, mm -hmm. the safety that they will have and how they will be covered. The Bible goes on to say, The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to com commemorate for your generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to jump over to the book of Matthew, chapter 27. I'm only going to read one verse from there, verses 50. 
Genesis 27 and 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And the simple topic I want to leave with you today is when I see the blood, when I see the blood, not when I see how you dress, not when I see how you preach, not when I see how you sing, all those things are great, not when I see how you play musicians, but when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. Touch your name and say, when, I, when God sees the blood, we understand that in Exodus, they were coming to the end of 450 years, which represents a man's uh, servitude to sin. 450 years of slavery before the promise broke forth. 450 years, uh, generations were born in slavery and died in slavery before seeing the promise. But God is faithful to his promise. Uh, and at the time when the promise came, uh, amen, somebody, it could only be covered, man's sin uh, could only be covered by blood. Uh, under the old covenant, sister angry, man's sin were washed away. It was covered, hallelujah to God because animals was a lower class of, of being that man so animal sacrifice couldn't eradicate uh, man's sin it take uh, the pure sacrifice uh, of Jesus and so we jump into Matthew chapter 27 and we hear that Jesus at verse 50 after being persecuted after being mocked uh, after being nailed to the cross his back open his brow bleeding uh, they are mocking him a spear in his side the Bible says uh, that he cried in a loud voice and gave up the spirit. But if we rewind to Matthew chapter 3, when John saw him, John says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Notice under the old covenant, the lambs covered the sins of man. But when we get to the new covenant, the lamb takes away the sin. Glory be to God. Oh! 
the blood of Jesus. Hebrews said that the blood of goats and the ashes of the heifer couldn't give man guilty conscience ease from sin. So no matter what they did, they went to the temple year after year, Reverend Everton. They got the scapegoat. They confessed the sins on the head of the scapegoat. Leviticus 16. They took it into the wilderness as a figurative speech of carrying off the sins of the people. But although the goat went away, the Bible said that it couldn't give their conscience peace. So they still went home. They knew that the sins were covered, but they went home with the guilt and the condemnation that they were sinners. But the good thing about Jesus, he deals with the heart. He eradicates the heart. He writes his laws in the heart because of the blood of Jesus. You're sitting here today. Stop letting the devil lie to you and fool you and make you feel that you can enter some other way. You can only enter by the blood of the Lamb. There is no other way, no other man, no other God, no other philosophy, no other ideology can bring a man out of sin. Ah, God, some other religions, their religion is so weak, he said it will take them five lifetimes to become perfect. But I only need one with the blood of the Lamb. I only need one because of the blood. I only need one. Jesus is the way. It's amazing that man sinned and God cursed the ground. But we don't understand the power in the blood. From the moment the first blood of Jesus of Nazareth dropped on planet earth, the ground was blessed again. Anything the blood touches it blessed. The, the, the tree he was hung on was blessed because his blood touched it. Listen to me. Moses had to sprinkle, Aaron had to sprinkle the blood of the goats and the, the, the bulls on the altar to sanctify the altar. Anything the blood touches is sanctified to God. So when God looks down on earth, God don't look at us because we're repented. God always sees man through the blood of somebody and said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, Revelation 12 tells me that the accuser is accusing us night and day before God. Right now as we are here, in New Generation Church, at 20, just on 22, on the 25th of March, the devil is accusing us before the throne of God. But Jesus says, just have a look at the mercy seat and tell me what you see. What he sees is the blood of Jesus. For the Bible tells me in Hebrews 9 that Jesus entered the veil, broke through the veil of his flesh, and entered the eternal glory of God with his own blood through the eternal spirit. A sprinkle it on the mercy seat in heaven. So that when we go to the mercy seat, we will go and no judgment won't come because mercy is sent out because of the blood. Mercy is sent out. Love is sent out because of the blood. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I won't give up on you. That's why the shanty, although you go and come, He's been patient, waiting to bring you to surrender. It's not that he loved your drifting. It's not that he loved what you did. But through the blood, he saw today. Through the blood, he knew the 25th of March 2016 would come. And that you'll be able to surrender to Jesus. And we've got some people in the world telling us, well, you don't know what their Good Friday is. The calendar change. Some judge you by the lunar calendar. Some judge you by the calendar of the West. Some judge you by the calendar of the Middle East. I don't care what calendar it is. Amen. And if we go further than that, Minister Dawson, it's not even the day, but it's who died on the day. The day was the same every other time. It was the same Friday like any other Friday. But something different happened on that Friday. Jesus died. The Bible said he gave up the ghost. What happened when 
he gave up the ghost, all of creation, all of death and hell began to tremble. The Bible told me the earth shook violently. Amen. The temple veil was red from top to bottom. They say the curtain was almost 11 feet tight, Minister Dawson, and four inches thick. Can you imagine the power it takes to rip the veil? That we don't have to go to man anymore, but we can go to the mercy seat because of the blood. The moment the blood of Jesus touched down on planet Earth, the moment the first drop of blood came, amen, demons started to scatter. They started to run. The dead in the grave of the righteous started to respond. Why? Because life is now come again to man. You see, man didn't have life in them. The spirit can come and dwell in man like he dwell in us now. He come upon man for a season and leave him for a season. But because of the blood, God can tabernacle with us now. God can live with us now. I want you to slap somebody and say because of the blood. Kiana, I know you're young, but the blood can keep you. Glory be to God. Come on, somebody. My sister, the water, Sister Charmaine, ain't gonna wash away your sin. The day you repented, your sins are washed away. The water is just an answer of a good conscience that you want to serve God. It's the blood that deals with sin. It washes it away. It makes me white as snow. It's amazing. Red blood dealing with black skin sin make a man white. Can you imagine the miracle? Red blood. It's amazing. There is miracle power in the blood. God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Come on, somebody. We look at Egypt and we see the dead angel creeping down one street after another in Egypt. Starting with Pharaoh's palace. Hallelujah. Pharaoh's firstborn died. The animal firstborn died. A wailing started in Egypt. But when the death angel got an Israelite house with the blood, it jumped over the blood and it struck the Egyptian house next to it. It jumped over two more Israelite houses and it struck five Egyptian houses next to it and killed their firstborn. Brother, we are protected. Some of you don't know how protected you are. The devil have you going around like poor thing. Well, let me tell you something. If you are born again, you have been engrafted into the greatest family that ever reached planet Earth. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Shake yourself. Shake the dust off. Rise from the ashes. Glory be to God. Begin to worship God. And make a terrible moves. I think today is a day that all Christians should be on their feet worshiping God. Blessing God. Because of the blood. If my 
My blood is compromised. My skin tone will change. My sight will change. My movement will change. In my blood, my red blood cells are compromised. My immune system, my white blood cells, sorry, my immune system is compromised. Do you know that your body produces new red blood cells every 48 hours? Poor blood is important. Pure blood is important when your body system uses up all the oxygen and the nutrients from your red blood cells. It runs back to your bone marrow where new blood cells are recreated. It's the blood. Somebody say to your neighbor, it's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. What could wash away? My sins, nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Feeling like I'm lost and in despair. But what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. One writer went as far and said, years of the devil's corrupt activity can be dealt with in a moment at Calvary. Years of the devil's corrupt activity. That's why I don't tell people when they want to get baptized, don't come back when you're perfect. Because you can't make it on your own. Come and let the blood deal with it. The blood will answer sin. The blood will deal with sin. Amen, somebody. It's the blood. Tell somebody. It's the blood. They're getting ready now. Tell somebody it's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Come on, slap your name on. And say it's the blood. I can make it through the blood. So I'm going to sing a song. There is nothing we can do uh, through the blood. The blood answers it all. God, I wish this was a Sunday and I had a few more minutes. I want to tell you about the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. It had such a divine quality, Brother Errol. It didn't clot on Calvary. Glory be to God because when blood clots, it stops. And glory be to God. But the blood keeps on running. The blood didn't clot 2,000 years ago. Glory be to God. It had it, uh, that makes it keep on running. Uh, it won't stop. Uh, it will keep on running uh, to eternity. Uh, bless God, I feel the anointing. Uh, it's the blood of the Lamb. Uh, it will protect you from destruction. Uh, it will bring you out from darkness. Uh, it will help you to overcome. Uh, for the Bible said uh, that they overcame him. Uh, the devil by the blood of the Lamb uh, and the word uh, of your testimony. Slap somebody now as we pray. Said I'm an overcomfort. <laughs> Call to the blood. Come on, slap them and let them feel it, get their attention. Let them feel it, get their attention. Said I'm an overcomer. Come on, tell them I'm an overcomer. Call to the blood. I'm not going to let the devil lie to me no more. Hallelujah to God. Are you glad you don't have to go once a year? Are you glad that you can go in any moment? Hallelujah. You don't have to wait once a year. But we can go in any moment. Are you not glad that you don't have to go to a man? Hallelujah. But if you mess up in the car, you can say, Lord, forgive me in the car. If you're at the desk, at the factory shop, taking care of your client, and you mess up, you can say, Lord, wash me again. Because the blood doesn't clot. It just keeps on running. It's the blood of Jesus. All oh, I feel the anointing. Can I pray for somebody today? If there's somebody that says, Pastor, pray for me. Even if you're born again, but you're struggling now, and you need the blood to cover you. I want to pray the covering of the blood. You